Hello, Chris Kiak here with Kiak Technology Solutions. And in today's video, I'm going to cover a question that I commonly get, especially from new users of Tecla. Where is the default number of bolts coming from inside of connection dialog boxes, especially when you leave the number of bolts empty here on the bolts tab on most of the common connections within Tecla? And the way that that is covered is in the joints.dev file. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and go through today. Now by default in the USA environment, the minimum number of rows suggested by the AISC is what is actually set up in the joints.def. And that's why you see, for instance, here on a W12 versus a W10, we're seeing that there is two bolts used uh, by default here, even though I could get three rows of bolts on the W12. So if you wanna max out the number of bolts on your beam and fill your beam depth up, I'm going to show you how by editing the joints.dev file. Okay, first we've got to go find the joints.dev file. And there's actually two of them, and they're inside of the environment folder. Now, if you have uh, Tecla structures installed in the default directory, you're probably going to find the USA environment installed underneath program data. If you don't see the program uh, data folder in your C drive, then what you need to do is I'm here in Windows 11, for example, underneath these options here. I'll just go to view, show, and I wanna make sure hidden items is turned on, so that way I can get to that. And then you'll go inside of there, find Trimble, then Tecla Structures, and then you'll find the environment. Now I've got uh, Tecla installed the old fashioned way. So I'm gonna go into my C Tecla Structures folder. I'm in version 2023. So I will then go to the environments folder. So that's the key here is we're looking for the USA environment folder. So here's USA. Uh, and then now there are three folders, common, imperial, metric. Now we're working in imperial primarily, so I'm gonna go to imperial. And here in the search at the upper right, I'm just gonna go ahead and type in joints.def. So joints, plural, dot .def, okay? And that'll return two files. There's joints.def and joints.def.maxbolts. I'm just gonna go ahead here and say open file in location, and it shows me the two files. Now, these are the same exact file, or at least the same format of file. The key difference here is that the currently named joints.def is the minimum rows of bolts. That's what it's set up for. So if I double click on this and open it up with say notepad, you'll see here that once it opens up that I've got a couple of different sections here. First, there's clip angle joints, and then there's these nominal depths of the secondary beam. And this is actually the true depth um, in inches. So sorry, I said nominal depth, but it's actually the true depth of the beam members or the secondaries in decimal inches here. And then it says which diameter of bolts are gonna be used and which quantity of bolts are gonna be used. So if you look at this here, any beam that is 7.75 inches in depth and greater is going to get two bolts as long as it's less than 13.5 inches. So if you think of the minimum row of bolts, Basically, that means W8s, W10s, and W12s are all gonna fall into this category of two bolts. Whereas W14s, which are usually greater than 13.5 inches, are gonna get three bolts. So that's how this works, is it's basically anything greater than this, but less than the next row underneath it, is going to get that number of bolts and that bolt diameter. Then there's another section here which basically says, for this bolt diameter that's being used, what clip angle size should I use? So basically you can control that if this diameter of bolt is chosen up here for this particular uh, depth beam, then that bolt is used and then this clip angle size is used in coordination with that. And then also the spacing on the bolts and edge distances on the clip, etc. So there's this basically clip angle section, okay? And then there's also a shear plate section. So the clip angle section, this is gonna work with connection 141 and 143. And then for the shear plates, this is gonna be like 146, 186, 184, any of your common shear tab components. There's also end plates in here. So if you're using end plates on jobs, you can do that as well. And then there's even going further related to your bracing connections and stuff like that. Now, most commonly, you're gonna probably set up your shear connections. So end plate, shear tabs, and then your clip angles. Now at the very top, there is a little bit of defaults in here. So again, a lot of people ask me, hey, where are these default sizes and uh, edge distances and weld size and all of that and thickness of material? Where are those coming from? Well, 
If you leave them empty in the component dialog box, in most cases, a lot of those settings are coming from this joints.dev file. So you can read up more in the help file, but the key here is that there's this depth of member, the diameter of bolt, the number of bolts, and then you can use the sizes of the material and what edge distance and spacing on your bolts. And for shear tabs, it's a little bit different. Here you've got basically based on the bolt diameter, you'll change the thickness of the shear tab that's uh, in conjunction with that. And then your vertical edge distance and your pitch of bolts and even your dimension down to the first hole if uh, Tecla can fit that and not foul the K and foul any copes, etc. Okay, so that shows you the minimum rows of bolts. But if we want to fill up our beams and use the maximum row of bolts, what we're going to do is we can copy this dot max bolts file into our firm folder, or we can just copy it directly into our model folder. So I'm going to copy this, then I'll close this down. We'll go to the Tecla menu here, open model folder, and I'll just paste this directly within that model folder. I'm going to then rename this to joints.def. Okay, so joints.def instead of the max bolts. And now because it's in my model folder, which is higher up in the search path, or the priority order in which Tecla looks through the model and the system installation folders, the model folder is the most important. And so it's going to find that joints.def here inside the model folder, and then it's going to go ahead and use those rather than the minimum rows of bolts that it was using before. So now I'm going to go ahead and close down Tecla structures, restart and reopen this model, and then I'm going to modify the connections and we'll see that the bolts uh, and their quantity will change. Now I reopened Tecla structures and reopened the model and I really wanted to quickly show you the joints.def max bolts that we copied into the model folder. Here you can see that the rows are a little bit different here. So here anything that is greater than 6.5 inches in depth but is less than 11.5 inches it's going to get two bolts. So that's going to cover things like your W8s and your W10s. But if it's 11 and a half inches or greater and less than 15.6875 inches, then it's going to get three bolts. And that's going to cover all of our W12s and our W14s. Then W16s will get four bolts. W18s are going to get five bolts and so on. So this is basically filling up the beam with the maximum row of bolts. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that down. Now, one thing that's important to understand is that it is probably a good idea to modify and set up your joints.def file before you start applying connections. You can uh, adjust it after you've applied connections, but then you have to go back and modify those existing connections in order to get them to read from your updated joints.def. So again, it's probably a good idea to set that up first. All right, so let's go ahead and start modifying some of these existing connections to watch how the bolt quantity will change. Let's start out with this W10 by 12 over here that's got a clip angle connection on it. When I zoom in, we can see that there's two rows of bolts. Now I'm probably not gonna get anything different here because as we saw in the joints.def, uh, including the max bolts, for W8s and 10s, we're just gonna get two rows. So I'm gonna change this to W12 by 14 and say modify. And now you'll see that it maxes this out and puts three rows of bolts here. Now, in this particular case here, I've got a W10 on one side and I've got a W12 on the other, and this is connection number 143. If I double click on this connection, and uh, one thing that you can do is you can actually uncheck all the checkboxes and just hit modify, and then that basically updates the component without actually changing anything in the dialog box, and it goes out and it rereads the joints.def because I have those fields empty here for the rows of bolts. Okay, so when I did that, you'll notice that on one side, it puts in three bolts for the W12. On the other side, it knows to put in two bolts. So if we just go ahead and let's do Shift-4, Control-2 so we can see the connections in solid. And there we go, we have two and three. Now we're going to come over here and let's go to this next beam. We'll do the same thing. Now if we're just modifying one connection, we can just open it up and modify. But if we were modifying a whole slew of connections across the job at once, again, I recommend unchecking selecting uh, those cones in the model and then modify and then it updates. So you can see here, if I just undo and redo, that it basically increased the number of rows of bolts. Now, one other special condition here is that if you have a bigger beam coming into a smaller beam, what it'll do is when it uses the maximum row of bolts, it's going to look at the smaller of the two framing members. So let's go in here and let's just update this connection. When we do that, you'll see that it does fill out the maximum row of bolts based on the primary member because that's all it could fit in there. So that way you don't get extra bolts running through the bottom flange of that beam. All right, so that shows you how you update those. Now, 
To override that, you can absolutely come into the connection dialog box and you can change the number of bolts back to whatever you want. So if I wanted three bolts here, I can modify that and it's going to give me exactly what I want. So the joints.def is basically being read when you leave these fields empty or blank. Now, one other key thing here related to the bolt diameter. If you uh, have the bolt diameter specified, then it is uh, basically going to not read that joints.def for like certain information. So what we want to do is if we want the bolt diameter to change based on the depth of the beam and the secondary, which we did see that option, the ability to change the bolt diameter, not just uh, the number of bolts. And what we want to do is we want to leave this at default so that way it reads from the joints.def. But the other thing that we need to make sure of is there's a setting that fools people up here in the options. So if we go to Tecla menu settings and then options, there's another setting here underneath components that controls that default uh, bolt diameter or bolt size. So if this is not set to default here and it's set to three quarter inch, then even though this component here is set to default, then what it'll do is the default is gonna read from this bolt size in here. And again, if this is specifically filled in, then it's gonna use three quarter inch all the time and not read the joints.def for the bolt diameter based on the depth of member. If you want it to read from the joints.def, you have to switch this to default as well. And then this has to be at default and then you modify the connection and it will read the bolt diameter based on the depth of the member from the joints.def file. So there you go. That shows you how you can leverage the joints.def file to modify the default number of bolts that are being used by technical components.